Well, welcome back, everyone. We're live here with Steve Turney from the Mental Health Marketing Conference. Welcome. Joshua, thank you. It's good to be here with the Therapy Flow community. Yeah, well, I'm excited for this conversation. I've been excited for a couple months since we knew that this was happening. I'm excited for some of the questions and more specifically your answers that are bringing in. If this is your first introduction for Steve, he's the executive director, owner of the Mental Health Marketing Conference. It's the seventh year that this is yes. happening. Okay, so seventh seventh year that this is taking place. Um, and you know it's a great conference that's all about marketing in the mental health space. So if you're following along, we're gonna dig into that conversation a little bit today, learn a little bit from the wisdom and advice from Steve here, and then talk a little bit about this year's conference. So again, welcome. Tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get into the conference? How's it been going the last couple of years? What do we need to know about Steve? Yeah, well, that's such a cool introduction and opportunity to share with your group, which I think is largely private practice um, owners and individuals. So that's that's exactly who we talk to. And I think as a marketer, one thing I would just say, like my big thing out of the gate is that it does get overplayed, but your story really does matter. And your story can be super powerful. So I'll just share my story in a minute um, yep. to answer that question. And it doesn't start with me. Actually, eight or nine years ago, a friend of mine had a, a long term relationship um, that uh, uncovered some bipolar disorder in his uh, significant other and uh, caught him off guard. But he kind of walked through that with her for a long while. And the next relationship, there was a schizophrenic break. and. You know, again, eight or nine years ago, this was um, a different time. It feels like it feels like yeah. decades ago in some ways, uh, especially when it comes to mental health awareness and stigma. So it uncovered his own ignorance. Um, so he he blended sort of the Venn diagram of his weakness um, in that area with his strength, which is community builder and marketer. And so Nashville is a healthcare hub, Nashville, yeah. Tennessee, and he just started this a uh, conversation. He didn't intend for it to be an annual event, but then uh, people, yeah, people kept showing up and wanting more. And so he kept pushing that rock by himself really for three or four years. Um, I came into the conversation, I turned 40, big round number, and I just used it as a way to sort of have a big moment in time. And so I went on a silent retreat in a monastery for a few days. And um as it can happen when when you have silence um some things happened and yeah. i came away with this message of help people in need as just an awareness of a real gap sort of in the the pie chart of my life and fulfilled fulfilled life so i started to fill up people's cars with gas and um then along the way even though I realized that was a little bit clumsy, I thought, I know who I can really help. And I think it's me. I'm going to go engage with a licensed professional counselor. And that was not the first time I had done talk therapy, but it was certainly an answer for me to figure out yeah. some of the hard yards and the work right. involved. So um, fast forward, I'm having a coffee with a friend, of my, this friend, Austin, and uh, he is talking about how difficult it is to run an event. And I, um, I was talking with an event professional today and they said, oh man, you said the dumbest thing possible to an event person, which was, how can I help? But it was those four <laughs> words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Oh yeah. It's uh, like, boy, I can I use the help? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, right now. Uh, and he did say book all the speakers and the sponsors. And so we leaned in on that together and that was um, 2018. We started planning for 2019, 200 people showed up. 2020, we're ready to go. Um, COVID hits and we have to pivot, have to change. And right. seven, 700 people come, albeit virtually. And then um, this, uh, we had to postpone in 2021 entirely, uh, which yeah. was very hard. It was sad for me. You know, you, you raise these things a little bit like your babies. And at some right. point you think, oh, am I failing? What's happening? But 2022 was a wonderful year. We had the global head of mental health from YouTube. Um, shortly after that conference, somebody from Meta um, actually uh, connected with me and, and wants to talk about maybe getting involved. No promises there. 
Uh, yeah. But 2023 is shaping up to be just an amazing year. So that's that's the story in, in a minute or two. Nice. Well, it's a great story, you know, and if you're you're tuning in live with us or even not it really helps us if you leave a comment or a share or something along along the way as we're doing this. So, you know, the appropriate people can see this. So take a second to do that as we continue this conversation. So, Steve, you mentioned a lot of, you know, great things in this process as you grow, grew into taking over this conference and launching it, what you're thinking about in 2023. But sitting in these conversations about marketing, about mental health, tell me a little bit about like what you've learned and what you've seen, you know, worked for for companies who are launching marketing around mental health. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um and we do, I do get to be in a lot of conversations, including with you. I took a lot from our first conversation and, and um, it's awesome to be on this show with you. And hopefully we can, we can chop up some more new ideas. Yeah. I think, I feel, I think there's two big pictures that I could paint related to that. One is that um, it's a very different landscape than it was eight or nine years ago for say the, thol the solopreneur who's yeah. hung up their shingle and eight or nine years ago, they were struggling with, I don't, you know, I need to design a website, I guess, but I don't really know how to do that. And email yeah. marketing is a thing and I don't know how to do that. And there's still some of that and like email marketing. I mean, the return on investment is it continues to just be um, tremendous. You know, yeah. it's, it, it had early mover advantage. And so it's one of those blocking and tackling moves that you can do really well to get people um, engaged with you and, and listening to what you're doing, but it's evolved. I mean, last year we had somebody on TikTok uh, talking about how to do vertical video and TikTok right. and how to bring mental health content into the world and realize who's on the other end of that, who's on the other end of both of those sides of the conversation. So the consumer, as well as the clinician or expert yeah. or provider, whatever terminology we want to use, so, um, you know, another picture I, I use is that imagine you're a provider, let's say a therapist, and you are at Madison Square Garden, let's say you're at a big venue and you're on center stage and the place is packed. And certainly the people in the front rows can hear you. Um, but what, how do you get your voice to everybody? You know, when we start yeah. to think about health equity, when we start to think about underserved communities, you know, how do you get it up to the rafters? Um, because other people are trying to do that also, right. and they may or may not have that sort of expertise or advocacy experience that um, just may make for the most efficient sort of content. So I think um, it's certainly involved, evolved in terms of channels. Um, we're, we're big on LinkedIn and we've seen okay. some of our attendees uh, jump to LinkedIn, which is exciting. We've seen them start podcasts yeah. and, and TikTok channels and all sorts of things. So we do try to uh, to stay up on what's what's new and great and the latest. So we're going to be talking AI this year, which is a very hot topic. And yeah. um, and virtual reality is is nascent, but coming online and um, and then some of the bedrock things that really I think move the needle, like. Yeah. What's what's your brand? Um, help people quickly figure out what you do well, what you don't do, and and then where else might they be able to find help? So we try to facilitate that conversation. And I am not a, a mental health expert. Um, I don't claim to be yeah. simply an advocate, but we do bring in uh, some amazing people to to talk. Yeah. So I mean, I think you're you're leaving the breadcrumbs if someone's listening for for places of high importance and high interest in the business. I think the question of like, who's who's on the other end, right? That's a question that you have to answer for who's reading my website, who's consuming my video, who's seeing my ad, who's whatever, right? And is it meant for them? Is it built for them? Is it in their language? Can they, can they see themselves and it doesn't move them to action, right? How do I do that? As a, as a mental health provider in all of these different zones to grow my business, to convert a client, you know, whatever. So huge elements of that. And it's exciting that you guys are talking about it. And then also, you know, what's new? Yes, yesterday or two days ago, I made a post in our community and I asked um, how many of you have heard of, you know, ChatGPT and or use it. Like 66% of people were like, I barely even know what it is and right. i i don't really know how it functions or what to do with it 
And then uh, one person answered, I know what it is, but I don't really use it uh, or I don't really see the point. And then like 40, 40 percent of people or 35, so, somewhere in there, 30 to 35 percent was like, I now use it frequently. Mm. Wasn't a huge, huge sample set in terms of size of people. But um, the fact that you guys are talking about AI and bringing it into the conversation for this year's mental health conversation, I just want to like push and point out that this this will have ripple effects for the next three, five, 10 years and beyond to the mental health industry. And at minimum, if you're a business owner and that solopreneur to small team, this will dramatically, dramatically transform um, you know, the landscape of how you interact and get work done in your business. So what are there any deeper things you can share about what are you guys are thinking about bringing AI into this conversation and how and why is that important? Yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah, we see chat, chat GPT, we see Jasper uh, yep. starting to eat, eat some people's lunch. There's copy <laughs> AI. So it's going to transform the way we do business and the way we create content. And I think you're absolutely right. So tell me what you think about this, because I was just having coffee yesterday with a friend of mine who could perhaps act as a moderator, sort of walking the, the thin line of the coin between somebody who is um, pro AI and has strong opinion about that. And then somebody who might be anti AI, like, the, yeah. you know, this is just the end of the world. And, and just <laughs> as a way to like explore the tension and the polarity of those um, fears and possibilities, which is really what we're talking about when we start to talk about AI, I think right. is, uh, yeah, it's it's interesting that there's a lot of people who are barely touching it. And then there's some that are just kind of dipping their toe in. And then there's certainly some who are diving all the way in. So we may do it as like a literal political debate minus yeah. all the political mudslinging. Um, but with a hard eye and attention toward, hey, this is a big topic and we need to really yeah. start understanding it. And he was telling me, I mean, there was that Wall Street Journal article, I guess, where uh, the reporter was interacting with the Bing uh, version of Chat GPT. Have you heard this yeah. story? Okay. So. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I'm, For those who did. Yeah. And I'm just learning about it. I'm sort of in the middle. So I'm not like an early adopter on that. But I guess it started to tell the reporter that, um, that no, the reporter had actually had a bad Valentine's Day with its wife and that it was in love with the reporter. And so, uh, you know, it just went down this path that is, was just absolutely bizarre. And the reporter eventually turned it off. And I might be getting my facts wrong, but I think that's the gist of the story. Right. So there is certainly a lot to be said for what is this thing? And ChatGPT is coming out with version four. So, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, they're moving, they're moving quick. Yeah. And I think, you know, not to get too into the weeds on some of this to you know to bring it to its relevant point i see i see two big categories if it dramatically changes content output what is that content and what is the efficacy of that content around mental health recommendations um and as a helpful tool for like content creation and process creation if you're a business owner trying to like leverage limited resources but also you know who's on the other end who's receiving that content how helpful is it actually what's the information that it's getting pulled you know all of those types of things so i'm excited to see um you know how you facilitate and how your team facilitates these conversations because this will be a conversation for years to come on these topics yeah. speaking of facilitation I, I wanted to talk a little bit about that you're you're a huge networker and you're a huge facilitator and advocate in some of these things um tell us a little bit more about what's what's at the root of of a collaborative approach or facilitator approach for hosting and building a conference like this? And why is that, or what components of that is so valuable in terms of a learning environment? You know, shed some light on that for us. Oh, in terms of running an event, um, you know, I did a survey live in 2022. It was just a hand raised survey. And I said, raise your hand if running an event is an easy thing. And everybody's hands stayed down in the audience. And there was maybe 200 people in the room so it was a pretty, it was a pretty clear, um, kind of tongue in cheek, uh, 
way to say that, yeah, this is this is difficult and it's uh, it's not connected to a, a broader company or a sales funnel or something. It's it's really a labor of love. So yeah. um, that said, I find myself in flow with this work because one of my strengths is a connector. That's one of sort of my superpowers is, if you will, is, hey, um, I could just connect the dots between you know, somebody like you and what you're building, the exciting services and offerings that you have, and people in the world that I know need exactly what you're providing and and maybe vice versa. And so um, there is, I've been doing the, you know, I didn't go to school for hospitality or anything like that. I've been studying deeply into hospitality and, and the psychology of hospitality uh, just on my own because I think that's the core of what makes conferences really special yeah. or or vice versa when they kind of suck the life out of you. And, you know, maybe it's it's a conference where it's, it's very stuffy and stodgy and, um, you know, some of that's required. Like we have to do some, some real hard work with the, right. with the head portion of the content and there's a lot to take in, but we're trying to do a better job of, of providing a lot of breathing room and space for the human to yeah. experience joy during the event, which is not something conference planners, I think, always think about. Yeah. So people end up at the bar and they end up at the bar at night um, for lots of reasons. One is that they're so exhausted and <laughs> they just need to be a human. And why not instead we explore some different ways to bring humanity and and delight and joy and fun into the middle of the conference. And then also, um, you know, a typical conference thing is that you try to take all the notes and remember everything and then go home. And then with your team, maybe in a week or two, you try to debrief and that meeting never happens almost, right. you know, you're just catching up on email and then you're into the next thing. So why don't we provide some space for those micro moment conversations to bubble up and to, to have room to grow? So we're yeah. trying to think about it in a different way based on kind of the wave and the trends of, of conferences, which are moving a little bit away from the giant big keynotes and big presentations and the one way conversation. Yeah, chop it up a little bit so it's at least digestible and you get some nutrient nutrients from it. Um, well, to that point, you were telling me about your favorite Chicago, uh, I think it's Chicagoland Tea Room, and yeah. we're, we're flirting with this idea of a Japanese tea service, which I've always just been enamored with. And yeah. uh, so I may need to, to jump up there sooner than later to <laughs> yeah. see what you know and learn from you. And, and it's just that beautiful aesthetic and um, it, it, you know, it's, it engages our smell and our taste buds and, and certainly our, our eyes with visuals. So I think there's a lot to, lot to bake into an experience. Yeah. And it's one of the things that I've been like journaling and processing a lot about lately is the speed something needs to go to get it done. Mm. And, uh, and so for, you know, there's a speed that is typically representative at conferences that actually sort of steamrolls the participants. And it's got a lot of like, wow, and flash and thunder, but then it's got a lot of exhaustion, lack of integration, and a lot of other things. So, you know, excited that you guys are thinking about that. But in any business, at any juncture, there's an appropriate speed for the item. And then there's an appropriate speed for you as you interact with trying to get that item done done and the more yeah. you understand your speed and the more you understand your business and that interaction point the more success you're going to have uh and i think you know like almost anything new requires you to go slow to learn it to integrate it to go smoothly initially and and most of our life is fast 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 right we and it's good because we're used to it we have our habits we have our rituals you know so we're used to being able to go fast in all parts yeah. of our life. So if we have an inability to go slow for the new things or mm. the, the things that need to be integrated, you know, whatever that is, uh, it ruins. So, you know, I, whether it's, it's a tea ceremony or, or micro moments to integrate, you know, live there, digestible processes that will, you know, that will pay out for the people who attend that conference. And that will pay out for the people who, um, you know, think through those things appropriately. Mm. I love that thought uh, process of speed. Um, it reminds me of a few things. My brother is always dropping these bits of wisdom on me. He's about 10 years ahead of me. 
and he's a big F1 uh, race car okay. fan. So yeah. uh, he drops this quote from, I think it's one of the Andretti's and, and I think it was maybe Mario Andretti, but uh, he says, uh, race cars have brakes, so they go faster. So in life, specifically when we're in a moment of change management or you know it's not simply a straightaway and we're all we're all out to the floor um flooring it when we have to make corners and shifts you're you're exactly right like smooth like slow and smooth is actually fast in the long run um and then you made it you made an interesting um observation about how do we how do we do the work to get it done and the thing i can say that i've learned and it's learning through failure is that um, because i need to go slow i cannot wait or i cannot procrastinate um, on things that come my way on opportunities that bubble up or yeah. conversations or those proposals that need to go out the door or or scheduling so we're way earlier this year um, on scheduling our agenda and getting our sponsor conversations going simply because I, I know that I don't have any time. Like September feels like tomorrow for me. <laughs> I'm sure. And it, and it allows me then to wake up the next morning and feel like, okay, I can, I can tackle my list. Um, and I make a big one every Sunday night and then I just work through it and try to remember the value of time. Um, because as it's kind of this uh, paradox that uh, money loves speed is what they right. say in, in on Wall Street and things like that. So um, the opportunities that are out there are abundant, but we have to we have to strike sometimes. Yeah. And I think it's like, how do you get up to speed? Because, yeah, I think money mm. does love speed and it's it's striving. It's striving for that speed and that effortless. But, you know, Anytime I feel like I, I prioritize speed as the thing itself rather than let it become the byproduct uh, of the thing, mm -hmm. um, I always go a lot slower and I get stuck sooner and I get more anxious and frustrated at whatever it is going on. My partner on Monday for like our, our weekly team meeting, Atilio, he he was like, Josh, just be patient for the next three weeks. Like he was, he was, he said it very kindly, but it was more like, geez, Joshua, just like, come on, be a little more patient. Like we're almost there. And I'm like, whew, you are right. Let's be patient. Let's go a little yeah. bit slower. So we can go a little bit faster later. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me, tell me a little bit more about the, the physical conference, um, that you are putting together. Let's take it in that direction. So someone who's you know, like, you know, what is this conference? What, you know, what are they circling around? So it's in September, right? Yeah. Yeah. September 25th through the 27th. So it's okay. a Monday through a Wednesday. Yeah in franklin tennessee just south Probably. of nashville and if you're looking for some fun there is also a music festival that happens the 23rd and 24th in franklin tennessee and i think chris stapleton was a headliner last year and and the killers and dave matthews band nice. so it's a pretty legit place so yeah. you could go have a ton of fun and then come having even more fun uh yeah. at our conference it's uh, we have moved venues we outgrew okay. the last one so it's at a place called The Factory, which was purchased last year by a hospitality group. And they are doing a multi-million dollar renovation that'll yeah. be done in the spring. So uh, parking is free and ample. It's um, There's boutiques and coffee shops where you can just chill. There's tacos, there's you know pizza. Nice. There's all sorts of things right down the hall. And then we have this space that can actually fit seven to 900 people uh you know and we're aiming for 500 this year which represents 50 percent growth for us and I, I wouldn't be surprised if we overshoot that or undershoot it a little bit um but the the inclusivity of the group is just amazing so yeah. what we don't do is we don't put our sponsors down the hall in the ballroom over there that you go visit once in a while they're actually um, they're actually encircling the group, the chairs. And, and what that facilitates is that when people get done and they get up after a presentation, it's just such a natural conversation to have with somebody there right. instead of it being forced. And I've stood at, at dozens and dozens of trade show booths and I yeah. do not like it. And I'm admittedly an, an, an introvert too. So um, it's, it's uh, maybe just comes from a little bit of self awareness or empathy about how can we reduce titles 
and reduce hierarchy or the haves and the have nots and get everybody in the room building real relationship. And that's yeah. the that's the goal and the point. So we certainly attract um, providers and clinicians. Um, 25% of our audience is an executive director or a C-level professional. And many of them wear two hats as a therapist right. or, a, or a, you know, a counselor or what have you. And then they're also running their business on the side. And then 50% uh, of the companies that come, at least as of 2022, were behavioral health organizations, some kind of yeah. either addiction treatment center or mental health or behavioral health. And there's right. several segments there. Um, and then we're going to do, you know, an opening reception Monday night, which we've never done before. And that's going to be a lot of fun. And then Tuesday is going to be a lot of main stage presentations, theater style. Yep. And then Wednesday, we're going to we're going to shift a little bit from the head to the heart and move toward what I'm going to call marketing group therapy, where instead of this one way dialogue from the speaker to you, yeah. uh, they're going to be asking your round table some some important, difficult questions that you all are going to try to chop up and figure out for yourself in real time. And they'll float around the room and facilitate and then they'll help kind of put a bow on that process. But that's just one thing we're doing that's going to be, I think, a little different than than most conferences. That's that's phenomenal. I've participated in a few conferences that have done done that model. And those were usually the segments or sections I walked away with the most amount of value. It was it was small, it was intimate, it was real, it was personable, you know, all of those things. And it what led in many ways to the model we have in our flagship program that we run on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, so you know, if you're listening to this and you're like private practice owner, I'm looking to grow some of those things, we host a call Monday through Friday, um, one or two at the same time every single day. And it's it's led. By one of the experts, one of the coaches in our program, three, five, 10, you know, 15 plus counselors will be on a call. And we're going to live, slow down, answer the questions, dig in, teach format. And we do that every day in that round table format. But putting together a host of experts in an event like yours and having them so accessible, um, huge learning opportunity. And I know when, you know, I, I and our team are there, you know, we are going to get phenomenal things uh, out of that as well. So what yeah, a service. that's fantastic. At, yeah, as as we think about that uh, and and kind of kind of push push through here, tell us a little bit about um, what a private practice owner, since that's what we're talking to today, might might have in terms of questions that could get answered at a conference like this, processes that could be improved or recommended on. What would they walk away with in a positive way? Um, mm. By, by coming to this year's mental health marketing conference? Yeah, um, I think that's a great question. And I think there's probably some, some strategy that's very upstream. So last year we did a conversation about mergers and acquisitions, which might be in the minds of a private practice owner. What is my end game? Or yeah. you know, what is phase two or three of this look like for me? So being intentional about that, hearing success stories, and then if you choose to go that road, how do you communicate well? What, Where do you set expectations? What maybe should you say and shouldn't you say during that process? So uh, along those lines, on the, on the business strategy side of things, even though this is the marketing conference, I think we're also focused on the market strategy conference. So nice. what, what's your appetite for profitability and, um, you know, how do you achieve whatever goals you have set for yourself there? Um, certainly there's some folks just doing pro bono hard work all day long, day in and day out, not necessarily the way it needs to be for everyone. And there's lots of paths up the mountain, of course, but just exploring the different options that are there for somebody in their business. Um, then we're going to get, we're going to get big into content marketing. Um, yeah. we, we just announced today, uh, Amy Keller Laird was the uh, she was the editor in chief at Women's Health for six years. Okay, and uh, she started a company called Mental, which is the first sort of mental health slash lifestyle uh, integrated brand. And she's going to be coming from New York, and then uh, and talking content and editorial and yeah. influencer. Um, I believe. Uh, there's a little asterisk on this just because we need to, to button up the details, but yeah. 
we're talking with the creative lead from Lady Gaga's Born This Way Foundation. Um, they've helped 82,000 teens go through a teen-focused mental health first aid, which um, you know I didn't do as a teenager. So yeah. I would love for them to come and talk. We'll see about that. Yeah. Um, and then there's a there's this wave of tech and um, private equity money. Also, we we need yeah. to be cognizant of sort of what the trends are there. And so uh, there's some companies really focused on the crossover of health equity and tech that are yep. are likely going to be on a panel. Um, and then I mean we do so throw some curves. So last year a keynote got up and he was a chief clinical officer at a marketing conference, straight up talked about shame for 45 minutes and <laughs> maybe just to me, but you could hear a pin drop in the room. And that's wow. where certainly we have the provider, we have the executive, we have the marketer, and then there's some admissions and out, you know, outreach and BD people as well. And yep. we have stuff for them, but there are humans at all, at all stages of that. And so yeah. some of what we do is let's make your life better. Um, or let's you know let's give you the con that content that enriches your your soul and your heart in addition to your business strategy and your business acumen yeah well it sounds like your your team has put together quite the process and lineup and i know that you are a pillar into that process as you have all of these conversations and such so it sounds like an incredible process I know some of the best growth, some of the best outcomes that I have seen in my life have happened in and through well-constructed conferences um, and I'm a big passion about that on um, you know in entrepreneurship specifically is the growth the education and the relationships that get formed at conferences and i have so many stories of like pivotal mindset changes and moments that like took place as a result of being surrounded by people or a keynote or something um which is especially why I want to bring you into this community and just like talk about it and talk it up, frankly, because, um, you know, if if you are a listener or you're catching the replay right now, uh, it is an opportunity to experience the segment of tons of different industry providers with different perspectives and different relationships. Um, and it's a great chance to kind of get your mind blown, learn a little bit, of, implement a few new things that are going to help you personally improve your care or improve your company. So, you know, Steve, overall, thanks. Thanks so much for coming in here, chatting for a little bit. If you're looking for some relevant links, uh, I think I dropped your guys' LinkedIn page um, here on this video. So you'll you'll see that to connect with you guys on there. And then the main mental health marketing website. What should they be looking for as they visit that website and as they dig deeper into the conference? Yeah, so, um, and I would love to hear if you, if something comes to mind, Joshua, from you that you think, oh, this has been my favorite thing about a conference I went to, or this is what I think you should do, let me know because we do have yeah. open ears for improvements. We're always trying to improve. Um, you know, May is coming up, um, yep. Mental Health Awareness Month. So we do have an early bird special that ends August 23, one month before the conference. But in the next um, three weeks, we're going to do two things. One is announce the 2023 agenda. Nice. Right now, the 2022 agenda is on our website if you need to see or want to see what we talked about last year. Uh, this year, yeah, the end of March, we'll, do, we'll drop the new agenda and then we'll drop a, an extra early bird discount uh, that'll be good through uh, the end of May 31st. Okay. So um, you can follow us on LinkedIn is probably where we're busiest, um, although we do have a great resource this year to kick up Meta and Instagram for us. Um, finally, we need to eat our own dog food of course <laughs> and do things well uh or join our email list as well you can do that okay. from the website nice well steve any any final notes you want to leave the community anything else we should know about the conference or you or where you guys are headed mm. um just that we're just that we're trying to create a space that uh of course drives towards something higher than all of us mental health awareness and 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 access and that's a, a big separate conversation but also agency is another word i would yeah. add to mental health which is what can we do for ourselves and the people around us and and i'm reading right now thomas insel's book healing and it's a fabulous book that talks about um the 
the hospitality of psychology that he's seen activated in Italy and some other places where they have world-class mental health resources. Yeah. And so as I've been thinking about the psychology of hospitality, I'm thinking now about the psychology of hospitality or the, uh, the, the hospitality of psychology rather. And yeah. how can we, how can we just, uh, be, be a, a, a light and a, a resource for people. So in a funny way, it's a marketing conference, but you'll come away, at least the people tell me, they come away with um, some transformative experiences and some new connections and relationships that hopefully actually help everybody's mental health in some small way during this event as well, as a way to just create a little ripple effect. So I, I hope nice. at the end of the day, that's what we, that's what we create. Nice. Well, again, pleasure having here. Um, if if you're seeing this, it feels relevant for someone in your your community, maybe do use the gift of hospitality and go out of your way to make sure someone else sees this. So give this a share. And you know, if you're watching this, if you're a private practice owner, you know, who's looking to grow your therapy practice in an intimate way with a team that does, you know think a lot through that hospitality component and the growth components needed to get the results you want, please reach out to the Therapy Flow team. Uh, happy to have a conversation about you know where your goals are at and what maybe we can do to help you get to that next level. Steve, pleasure having you. Uh, and we will